Hi, this is John with the Pine Tree, and I have a great pleasure being here with Nicole Holmquist. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, she is a budding author. We're going to talk about her first book, One Life. Now, it is a uh, personal reflection of your life experiences up till it now. And, stuff. and I guess we should say for it's One Life. This is what it looks like. It will be up on BarnesandNoble.com and Amazon.com the next few weeks, right? Right. In time for the holidays, you can buy a copy for all your friends, family, people you don't even know. Makes it great, yes. Yeah. Right. Very good. Now, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from South Carolina, okay. in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. She has a great southern accent. <laughs> um, I was born in Charleston. I'm an adoptee. And that was something that, I, you know, that's a huge theme in my book. Right. Uh, finding my family. And I lived in Greenville. I was adopted or born in Charleston, okay. but grew up in Greenville. And I met my husband in Minnesota, mm-hmm. in the middle. In, in Minnesota? Teenagers. Yeah. So you have competing accents? Is that the... No, he's no? from here. Oh, he's from here? Oh, you just met him in Minnesota. Visiting. Oh, okay, all right. So after we married, um, he is from Minnesota. So I thought he was Yah, you betcha, and you... No, no just, my mother is. Just she's kidding. from Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, so we moved out here to be uh, closer to his family, and we absolutely loved it. We picked Angels Camp specifically because of the high school. And yeah, because all my research online. You know, sure. Been out here about three years. Three years. Ah. Yeah. That's it. Well, now let's see. Um, tell us a little bit about now the story of um, you know uh, adoption. Now, this is a. I guess this is a, a finding your birth mother. Is there? Mm-hmm. Is that? I don't want to give too much away, okay. All right. but <laughs> but it's okay. Um, yes, I did find my mother. Okay. And I actually started writing the story prior to, and you know, I've, I've been um, through an abusive marriage sure. and through a lot of other sure. hardships, and yes. decided to write it down to hopefully help other people who've been there. And I was going to write the fictionalized version of Finding My Family, yeah. and I got right to that point where I was going to. You know, did the entire thing right. in fiction right. and did it. So everything that I wrote from that point on was exactly as it happened. So I wow. found my mother and wow. my whole family, extended family, brothers, sisters, oh. grandmothers, father, everyone. You know, I guess in adoption there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of complex layers. I mean, it just, mm-hmm. it, I mean, you, you, you would naturally have the affection for the people who adopted you. Sure, you know, that, absolutely. And then, and then there's all the, you still want to know where you came from. The way I look at it, and this is what I yeah. told my, my adopted mother mm-hmm. back in 96. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was kind of a time. There, yeah. yeah. That my adopted father, who is still alive, mm-hmm. and, uh, and very proud of me, and he was helping me behind me 100%, he and my stepmother both. Um, I told them when I found you know, my mother and my birth father that, you know, a child or a parent can love more than one child, oh, yeah. and a child yeah. can love more than one parent. Yeah. It's just a bigger family. What's wrong with what? That's right. Know? That's right. Um, so is the book a, you know, a basically an account of uh, autobiographical your life, but the, just the experiences you went through to get where you are now? Is that one of the things? Or yes, is it, it is. It's also something that I went step by step with how I found my family. So it's a how-to manual as well. In a lot of ways. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because it is very difficult. There are only four states, and I think a lot of people would be surprised to hear this. There are only four states in our country that allow adoptees open access to their birth records. Uh huh. And Maine is going to be the fifth. They're so going to open up the records. Hard, you know, spelunking through all the yeah. various counties. Well, it's all blocked. So it's all blocked. Everything's blocked. And a lot of my things, when I turned, you know, 18 mm-hmm. and then 21, mm-hmm. I thought I could find her. Right. And a lot of people right. assumed that you can. And I was shocked, personally, when I found out I couldn't. And was only given non-identified information. Got it. And I knew my mother had felt the same way, as did a lot of mothers back then, that their children could find them when they turned mm-hmm. 18 and mm-hmm. 21. And mm-hmm. she went through a depression. I didn't want to find her. Oh, interesting. So yeah. from the other side, there may be that expectation that maybe my child will seek exactly. me out or something. Because a lot of people uh, assume that they can, okay. and they can't. Uh, okay. So, interesting. Yeah, so there's a big push for you know adoption records to open for those who have that need. So who would you say, who should read this? 
Well, I besides think everybody, you know, and, you know <laughs> everybody on Amazon. I mean, besides everybody, right. yeah. Everybody. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, I think it, it actually will appeal to a lot of people, particularly adoptees, okay. and anyone involved in adoption. Right. Um, I think it has a lot of good points to that. Anyone who's ever lost a parent, a best friend, um, been in an abusive relationship, a physically abusive marriage, you know, break a leave, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, any, you know, I, I, I think I tried to share anything that I went through to help someone who may be going through the same thing. How many years did it take you to, to write it? I mean, how long was Ten. Ten years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At least wow. ten. At least ten. Ten years. Well, and that was mostly because, you know, you start writing different yeah. sections and you know back into the past and a lot of the times when I wrote about being you know abused yeah there were a lot of times that I had to take a break from it Oof, I can imagine yeah because yeah, you I put yourself imagine. there when yeah. you're writing you're visually putting yourself there yeah so I have yeah. to back off you know, for a while yeah uh. and then of course when finding my family all that unfolded as it happened right right but yeah it took a while and I have children beautiful girls and my husband, so you know, I had a family and juggling. Oh yeah, and yeah. And now you also do real estate as well, right? Yeah, now, now, what office? Century oh, Century Twenty One. Oh, Sierra Property. Sierra Prop so right. that's the office if they that's were. Right. Oh, okay. And now Kathleen you have books. Bennett gave me my start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now are you can have books in the lobby here as well. I have to ask Kathleen about that. Oh, yeah. she may want to cut of the book sales. So. Well, she may, right. and we can yeah. do that. Her, you her work something out. Her broker fee for right. the yeah, the broker <laughs> fee for the book sales. And it's funny because I actually the um, the publisher I'm going through was through a real estate connection. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I think things always happen for a reason. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it was, I think that was one of the one of the catalysts for getting my book published. Well, thank you for writing it, and I know this okay. is, and I, I know in some ways this is, it's a very it had to be a very difficult process at times to write it. Yeah. And, and it's scary. It's scary to put your heart out yeah. there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it, we're but looking forward to reading it. So, thanks. One Life by Nicole Holmquist, Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble.com, or a local bookstore around here. In time for the holidays, and thanks for doing it. Thank, uh, you, thank you, Noah. So thank you, Rich. You know, really for doing it. And thank I know you. that because I, I had dated a girl that was adopted, you know, oh, years ago, really? and she, she had, she hadn't found her, her birth mother yet, and it was, you know, she had. So I'm. I may pass this along. It, it was Please really, yeah. That would she, be wonderful. And she, but she had all those emotional issues of whether she should, she shouldn't. Right. She, and, right. I, and I can imagine it's a very complex. And let me just say too that that was one thing as I was searching because I searched from the time I was 18 and so right. I found my mother at 32. Mm -hmm. That oh, I helped, means. yeah. Oh. And I helped a lot of other people along the way. I've learned a lot of tricks, you know, and been involved in a lot of different reunions and saw different outcomes where you know, the child doesn't want to be found, right. the parent doesn't right. want to be found, and happy ones. Mine could not be happier in every way, but that's something wow. else that well, I want, yeah. and I say in the book too, anyone who would like help okay. finding it, I completely volunteer my help, my services, yeah. and I can do help. But they have to buy a book at least though, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> On that part, <laughs> just go to my website. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, God. How was that? You did that? great. <laughs>